When you see these sunglasses, you already know who the video is about. It's about Kizaru, but um, my Kizaru sunglasses are in the car. Am I blowing up your ears? Hello? Hello? One of the biggest talking points of Egghead has been Kizaru's dilemma. His unclear justice, if you will. As Oda himself would put it, you never really know what Kizaru is thinking. And that theme is further explored in Egghead when they... When... Kizaru is ordered to kill Vegapunk, his supposed best friend according to chapter 1124. But real quick, as you all know, I'm trying to hit a thousand subs by the end of the year. So if you all enjoy my content, remember to leave a like and subscribe. S subscribe, oh my god. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm gonna give a really quick recap because I know you all already know the lore. But it starts with Kizaru initially disliking the idea of cloning a tyrant king slash pirate. Which obviously isn't who Kuma is, but Kizaru didn't know any better at the time. Very quickly, Kizaru realizes that Kuma is a good person. Specifically after this panel that had me in shambles the first time I read it. And second time. And third. And fourth. I can't lie. I'm in shambles every time I look at this panel. Nevertheless, they become good friends, eating pizza together, and even doing the Nika dance together, which is so crazy to me. Fast forward to 1105, we see Vegapunk begging Kizaru to call off the siege. Kizaru obviously doesn't call it off, but you can see how hurt he is. And you can just tell that Kizaru wasn't the nonchalant dreadhead he normally is. Obviously, Saturn is the one who landed the big blow on Vegapunk, but ultimately, it was Kizaru who delivered the final blow, killing Vegapunk. Luffy eventually puts Kizaru out of his misery and sends him crashing into one of the battleships where he finally gives up. Now back to present day, we have a Kainu on the transponder snail with Kizaru accusing him of failing in Egghead. And for the first time in the entire show, Kizaru breaks. You know what's funny? I haven't even seen this panel yet and my heart is already aching. This isn't the official translation, but Kizaru said something along the lines of, Have you ever killed your best friend? If you doubt me, come here and see for yourself. The leaker also said, Who cares about what the leaker said? The chapter just came out. <laughs> Like, well, if you've got time to waste doubting me, come and see for yourself, you damn angry. I had to search up what angry meant. Oh my god. <laughs> Why? And here's the thing, right? Okay, the leaker said that, you know, Kizuru has tears in his eyes and that he's angry. But Oda is such a, like... I think like drawing emotions is his like strong point, right? Because, you know, Oda is not known for his shading or, or, or whatever it is. He has a very cartoony art style. He's not known for being the most like articulate drawer, if that makes sense. But any time he draws someone crying, someone emotional, someone angry, he always portrays it perfectly. Never in my life did I expect Kizaru to make this face. I thought he was just going to be mad. But there's something about his facial expression. No glazing, but honestly full glazing. No other artist could have portrayed this better. Like, even like... This was too much for me, man. I was already having a bad day. This was too much for me. Anyways, back to the video. I just, I just had to comment on how like insane this was. Oh, and also Akainu... I kind of apologized. In the original transition, he was like, oh, I I'm sorry, brother. And then Kizuru says it's too late for that. But I think it got retranslated. And instead, I kind of only said, my bad, brother. And then Kizuru said, just watch your mouth. Which is completely different to, it's too late now. But still, like, like you know it's bad when a Kainu is, like, shook. You know what I mean? A Kainu is shook. Also, the flashback where Kizaru was helping Vegapunk build the, you know, like, Egghead Island. Saying, like, oh, I I'm an admiral, I shouldn't be doing heavy lifting. 
<laughs> this is too much, bro. I don't want to cry on camera, man. Back to the video. Now, there are people online saying that Kizaru knew about Vegapunk's plan to die. And that is why he went through with it and ensured that no one but Vegapunk died that entire time. Which in my opinion is actually a plausible theory because if you think about it, while I was reading back through the chapters so I can like, you know, get the script for this video, I realized that while they were all escaping in that vacuum rocket, he could have easily killed everyone with a single slash. Because everyone in that rocket was like what, like, uh, the robot Vegapunk girl that got one-shotted by bum-ass Luchi, uh, Kuma who was disabled, Bonnie who's a literal child, who else was in it? Like, nobody could have stopped him, right? I, I think. Was Sanji with them? Frankie, I think, was with them. If Sanji was with them, then I understand why, uh, Kizaru didn't go through with it. <laughs> But anyways, they were all escaping that vacuum rocket and he could have easily killed them with one slash. But he instead cut the pipes rather than his actual targets. So who knows, maybe Kizaru has already betrayed the world government and him crying over Vegapunk shows that he knows he's not on the right side of history. So we'll see how this unfolds in future chapters because if I'm being honest, if the final war is basically a parallel of the ancient kingdom's war from the void century, I can't imagine Kizuru being on the same side as the Gorose and, you know, the likes of Green Bull. Just saying his name disgusts me. Anyways, I can't wait to read this chapter when it actually comes out. And yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you all in a few days. Bye bye.